Lord. I thank you for bringing restoration to her, Lord. I thank you for making her that sign that wonder that the doctor Whoa. does. Oh, Lord. And the nurses will come in and see what's going on. And they will feel your love and your presence and stand in awe, Lord. And Ooh. you should be a magnet, Lord. And that room will be a magnet, Lord. Whoa, yes. Yes, and yes. The Spirit of the Lord says, I am a faithful God. I am a faithful father. I am a faithful brother. I am a faithful best friend, saith the Lord. Oh, and I am good. Oh, why do you doubt? Why do you doubt? Oh, I keep it simple for my children. I ask you to keep it simple for yourself. Oh, it's a simple relationship. Receive my love. Receive my love. For I am glorified when you receive my love. For it will be automatic where you will love me back, saith the Lord. It will be automatic. Keep it simple, saith the Lord. Keep it simple. Oh, do you not feel me here? Do you not know I am with you even now, saith the Lord? Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe in. Do not fret, says the Lord. Do not worry, says the Lord. For this too shall pass. But when you do not believe me, when you do not trust me, you invite the enemy to stay in the midst of it with you, says the Lord. This too shall pass. Is it not my promise? Is it not written, saith the Lord? He's here, guys. Wow. So thick, that weighty glory, that holy presence. 
that holy presence just saturating into us. It's transforming us whether you realize it or not. That's why it's important for you to position yourself in your daddy's house. There's an impartation that occurs every single time. There's an ignition, igniting, where he turns on the ignition, man, that you can't get consistently and constantly unless you're with your brothers and sisters. He made us totally dependent upon him while we're totally dependent upon each other. We stir each other. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm screaming. Go ahead, Priscilla. Woo, woo. I'm telling you. Wow, man. You know, God is faithful. He's faithful, man. <laughs> Even when we don't see it, He's faithful. He's faithful. He's paid you. Brother, Spirit of the Lord says this to you. Do not grow weary in doing good. Do not let frustration come upon you, my son. For I am with you, for I am for you. For right now, I am training you. For right now, I am stretching you. For right now, I am enlarging your heart so that you can receive more from me, carry more from me, and release more of me, saith the Lord. Do not grow weary. Do not grow frustrated, saith the Lord. I'm with you. He's in love with you, brother. He's in love with you, man. He believes in you. Oh, he's molding you. I can see him molding you. That's what I can see him molding you, man. Mm. Wow. You know, <clears throat> one of the things we fail to realize is that we're just like Jesus. Life starts coming. Family and friends start acting a certain way. Money starts getting a little funny. We just don't feel it anymore, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, everyone online, hello. I'd like to welcome you <laughs> to our, our Wednesday night igniters, man. Oh, you're gonna get ignited tonight, man. I ask that you would like this and share this, man. You know, be that seed sower, man. Be that seed sower. I see you guys all doing it already, man. That's awesome, man, you know. But thank you for being here with us tonight. There's a lot of things you can do. And I promise you, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek after him, man. You got reward coming to you guys tonight. Yes. <clears throat> Woo, man. I receive it. You know, the Holy Spirit is here to make you like Jesus. So that you can pick up where he left off. 1 John 4, 17 says, as Jesus is, so are you in this world. 1 John 3, 8 says that Jesus came to destroy darkness. Why are you here? 1 John 2, 6 says that if you say you're a Christian, you ought to walk exactly as I walk. I don't feel like Jesus. My life don't look like Jesus is like. I wonder if Jesus popped gummies all the time. I wonder if Jesus cursed people out all the time. No, man. You're like Jesus. You have the kingdom in seed form. The Holy Spirit is here 
for you to co-labor with him to mature that seed, to grow that seed, man. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is, man. And we need each other. You know, Hebrews 10, 23 and 24 says, do not forsake the assembly of the gathering. That means you got to show up because <clears throat> the will of God for your life comes through a local church, whether you believe it or not. <laughs> the Bible says it does, so, you know. But do not forsake the assembly of the gathering for when you come together, you get stirred. We stir each other. Kyle's like, man, I don't even talk to that chick. Yeah, but your spirit is. Check this out. I was doing a conference years ago, man, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'll never forget it, man. And I was on the side standing there with a prophet, man. And all of a sudden, the worship leader had just had a baby. And it was in like one of them carriers, like I see snap it in the back of a car seat type deal. And it was cold. She put the baby down and the baby started talking. Newborn baby, not with physical words, but spirit to spirit. And said, I'm as big as you are. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm kind of freaking out here, man, you know? Yeah, right. Worship's going on right there. I'm standing on the side, you know? I was assigned, you know, I was, you know, did everything sewn into that ministry. Got water. Bodyguard, you name it, I did it. Man, I was this guy's bodyguard that day. He was standing there, and that little baby started talking to me. I'm as big as you are. Wow. I'm like, what? You are? So I start telling Bobby. He said, oh, yeah, that happens all the time. It's normal. It ain't normal me. <laughs> and then he gave me the scripture I just gave you. When we come together... That baby stirred me. We get stirred in love to do the good works, man. We all bring an atmosphere, man. Yeah. We all bring an atmosphere. Man, I don't feel like going tonight. Man, you're hurting your brother, man. He needs you to go. Let alone hurting yourself, but he needs you to go. I know so many people in here tonight got off work and came here. <coughs> you know? They position themselves, man. They position themselves, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing about that, by positioning yourself, you get that impartation that comes in your daddy's house. The next hard thing you go through, because you positioned yourself, receive that impartation, you're able to overcome that next thing, man. You're like, I didn't even know I could do that. You ever get amazed? I can't believe I didn't curse so-and-so out. Because you've been showing up on Wednesday nights, man. Because you've been praying every day. Because you've been going lower, man. You know? So I, I just, I don't even know where that's coming from, man. Let me get back to this. But I just want you to be encouraged, you know, everybody here tonight and everybody online. Amen? Uh, but you're just like Jesus, man. You're just like him. But it says this in Ephesians 4.15, that we need to speak the truth in love so that we can grow up into all things till we're at the full stature of the body of Christ, man. You know, if it was up to Jesus, he'd come back for us today. But we're not at the full stature. The bride is the body of Christ. We're not at the full stature yet. Daddy says, now nah, you guys ain't pretty enough yet for my son, man. No parent wants their child to marry an ugly dude or an ugly woman, man, you know. That's where we get it from our dad, man, you know. No, that's not true. I'm being, it's, it's a bad joke, man. You know? But <clears throat> we're going through a beautification process. Yeah. That's what we're doing, just like Esther had to. She had to go through it. <clears throat> but you decide how long you go through your process. Yeah. I decide. And then as a house, we decide together. Yeah. So, Brother Alex, going through something, we need to get Brother Alex through what he's going through together. Right. 
together. You know, Saturday we had a leaders meeting. I talked about building relationships, man. You know, I talked about building relationships. You know, there's some, some people don't know nothing about anybody in there. Talk to somebody today that you ain't talked to after service, man. Get to know them, man. Get to know them. Get to know them. You know? Brother Kyle's sending me some games and stuff I'm playing with him. He's whooping me on the games, man, you know? And then he tries to build me back up. Oh, it was close, brother. Nice try. Yeah. When he whooped me, you know? But no, that's what we do for each other. You know, we re we have fun with each other. We relate yeah. to each other. Yeah. We, yeah. you know, I mean, that's the grace, man. Yeah. That's the grace on Chrislin, man. You know, that's the grace. But do you know it's a grace you have? Are you aware that you're trying to love people for a living like Jesus? That you're trying to make somebody's life better, man? See, when you spend time with Jesus, when you pay the price, what is paying the price? Suffering. It's doing something you don't want to do. Doing something you don't want to do. The bears, when they're on TV, <laughs> let me tell you this in my immature days 20 years ago. Guys not moving. Here, why are we staying in church? Let's go. I'm going to watch the game instead of me trying to move God. I would literally say, God's not moving, guys. You know? Come on, we got to pray more this week. We got to worship more this week. I'll see you guys Wednesday. And I would leave. Yeah. I was a bogus leader, man. Yeah. I was a bogus leader, man. And the sick part of it is because I wanted it so bad to watch the Bears because I was paying four hundred dollars a month for to watch every NFL game on that dang thing, man. Because I couldn't pirate cable no more. Because I'm saved. <laughs> I had to use it. I didn't even get convicted. I justified. Good point, baby. I justified my choice. I justified. My willfulness, man. Yeah. I justified my sin. I justified my laziness. Because that's what it was. Yeah. It was self-centeredness and laziness, man. I tell you guys all the time, if God's not moving, then you move him. I tell you all the time, sometimes you can do it in a half a song. Sometimes you got to sing five songs, man. Depending on what's happening at the moment, man. You know? But when we're self-centered, God, I'm giving you 10 minutes. I got to go to work. You know, I got to stop and do yeah. that. I got, you know. God, tomorrow I'll get you. I won't hit snooze three times before work. That's nobody in here, just in case you know somebody. I mean. <clears throat> but when we miss an encounter to suffer, because suffering is the gift we give back to them. Job 13, 15 says this. Although you slay me, I will trust you, Lord. Whoa. Trust is the gift we give back to him. Why does he got to slay us? Why does he got to crush us? Because we've agreed with the liar and handed over our authority. So he's got to be like, no, 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 you're not, you're not made to be a victim. But if you keep thinking that way and keep doing that stuff, this is where it's going to go. So you got to cut him off. You got to cut that out. You got to yeah. start doing this. That's how come he gave leaders. He gave, I got something to be Ephesians 4, something to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the body of Christ, for the saints. <clears throat> to equip them to do ministry. Every single believer has a ministry. Yeah. Wow. But the enemy tries to get our focus off Jesus. We don't see we have a ministry. What do you mean I have a ministry? I'm barely hanging on. I just got done looking at porn. 
I just got done, you know, committing adultery. I just got done hating my coworker, whatever, man. God isn't so much concerned with what you do, but why you do it. Because yeah. it comes from a heart condition. It comes from the revelation you have by the price you pay to position yourself where God wants you. We all move by the speed of revelation. We live by the speed of revelation. Alex is a carpenter. Kyle is a construction boss, man. You know? Julio was got his own business. Extermination, you know? They got revelation on how to do their job. What to do, what not to do. You know? Especially Julio better get some, because he'll spray you, man. And, you know, with that bug stuff, that stuff is straight poison, man. You know? I mean, you got to understand, we live and move by the speed of revelation, amen? You got to do that, man. Even in a negative way. Man, I can get away with this. I can get away with this. My wife still lets me back in the house. I could get away with this and party all night. I still went to work. Yeah. You know, I mean, but we don't get away with nothing, really. We think we do. We deceive ourselves. But the thing is, you either sensitize your spirit where you're more open to receive, or when you do willful craziness, you harden your heart, man. So it's harder to receive. That's the difference between going into worship and connecting with him on a half a song or five and a half songs, yeah. you know? Because you're suffering. You're paying the price, man. You're paying the price. It's hard trusting someone you don't see. It has to be done by revelation. Yeah. It has to be done by revelation. Especially someone who's a hustler. Man, it was hard for me to get saved. I was a hard-headed guy, man. Took me three and a half months. I didn't believe the Bible. I questioned everything, man. Until I had an encounter with him. And that's what he wants you to have. Yeah. But if I would have kept running, he could. He had to put me in a jail cell to slow me down. You know, I don't know what your story is because he puts people in different places at different times. But pretty much it's to get your attention because he's in love with you and you've been living for the wrong stuff. You've been living at a lower level and you're so precious and valuable and important and you carry a piece of his DNA that one of the other 7.6 billion yeah. people on planet Earth do and you're created to manifest it, man. Yeah. So he's like, I had to get your attention. I got to slay you so you manifest, man. I got to slay you, man. I got to crush you. You can't mold hard clay. Can't mold hard clay. I'm telling you. Proverbs 4, 23 and 23, 7 say this, man. To guard your heart above all things. Guard your heart above all things. For out of it flow the issues of life. As your heart goes, so does your life. Yeah, yeah. If you're a schemer and a slickster in your heart, if you're manipulating everybody to get what you want and have your way and to conform to your world, Man, I'm telling you, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. What are you laughing about, Abby, man? <laughs> you're in trouble. I'm telling you, but that's how we get. That's how we get sometimes. Why? Because we fight him breaking us. We fight him 
I can't trust you on that. That don't make no sense to me. The kingdom makes no sense to the natural mind. The, <coughs> the natural mind says, when I see it, I'll believe it. The kingdom says, when I believe it, even this much, and I keep speaking it, it'll grow more and more and more, and then I'll see it. The kingdom tell you, hey, you only got a little bit, you need more. No, the world tells you that you got a little bit, you need more. The kingdom says, you got a little bit, I'll take the little bit you got and give it to the guy who's got the most. That's what the kingdom says. Don't make sense to the natural mind. It says that it's foolishness to the natural mind. I remember when I first got saved, I'll be witnessing to some of my family. They're like, oh my God. The dope really did something to his brain, man. He's having one of those PCP flashbacks, one of the acid. Something happened to Steve this time, man. You know? And they're all talking. And I'm just excited about Jesus. And I'm telling them everybody. I didn't know nothing then, you know? I'm all excited and pumped up. And nobody had anything good to say. Well, one of them did. They said, well, at least he's not killing people no more. That's the only good thing they had to say about me getting saved. Those closest to you usually don't see the truth in you. That's why God will separate you from them, man. But we hold on to them. We say, Holy Spirit, I don't need you with my wife. Take a seat. I don't need you with my kids, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I don't need you with my finances, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Louis, can I get one? Thank you, please, bro. We're like, no, 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 I got this. And we've all done it. We all still do it, unfortunately, yeah. sometimes, you know. I mean, we got to come to a place where as he slays us, we stay dead. We stay dead. We stay dead. I remember I used to get in arguments with my wife and she'd cry. That was cruel. I'd say cry for somebody who cares. We would cry tears for the enemy. I cared. I was just being cruel. But I mean, but sometimes we thank you. But sometimes we got to stop crying for the devil. And fight back like this. Instead of trying to spar with them, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try to spar with the enemy, man. You know, you cannot spar with the devil. Your fight is not against people. Your fight is against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in second and first heavenly places, man. Yeah. Yep. And we want to hate people. We want to talk crap to people. Even what's it messing with you? It's a demonic influence. No, I'm saved. Yeah, okay, man. Read the gospel. <laughs> it's okay. You got to get a revelation, man. Get to get a revelation. I need help. I need help. You know, I don't want to brag on Brother Kyle. I've been saying his name too much, Chad, but he texted me yesterday. He said, hey, I want to learn about spiritual gifts, man. What do I got to do? I was like, wow. And I was sitting there in the counseling session. I didn't look at his text for like an hour until after I was done. I didn't get home to like 10. I was like, man. And the Lord says, do you see the enthusiasm in that? So the Holy Spirit spoke to me when I was letting the dogs out. I was like, man. He says, get them hungry. Get them hungry, Steve. Get them hungry, man. Get them hungry. Because he wants you to be unrecognizable to your family that talk crap about you. He wants you to be unrecognizable to the people you grew up with, man. He wants you to be unrecognizable to all those that said that junkie, that dope thing, that no good whatever, man. 
He wants you to be unrecognizable to him, man. I'm telling you, man. You got to believe in your heart, man. You got to believe in your heart. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Whoa. Therefore, now that you know this good stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Wow. Everybody carries the Father's DNA. If they're still breathing, there's still hope for them. And I know I'm God's answer. I'm called to pick up where Jesus left off, man. I got to help him. I got to help him. I got to do something. I can't just worry about my job. I can't just worry about my kids. I can't just worry about my marriage, my finances, my school. Me, 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 me. I got to get my focus off myself. You know, one thing, I, I don't do it so much anymore because I kind of, grew up a little bit but one thing i used to do all the time was when i would get upset and angry which happened almost every day <laughs> i would go to the valero gas station and i live in a ghetto so i don't have to go far you know but i would go to the valero and i would just start ministering and praying for people and talking to people and i would feel so much better man 20 minutes, half hour only. And I'd sit there and just start driving on people. Praying for people, man. And this is what it is. I got the focus off me. I was mad because it was still all about me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Psalms 112 verse 6 says that the righteous can never be shaken. When you know who you are and why you're here you can't get offended no more from now on like it says right here from now on i'll regard no one according to the flesh so when they try to tick me on no 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 that's that demonic influence because you don't know who you are coming out through you man it's all good in the hood man i got you on this one but i see your creative value i'm gonna pray for you yeah. april start telling people god bless you God bless you. Her family is like, wants to throw something at her. You know? I mean, God bless you. You know? I remember back in the day, Letty didn't want to fight with me. I try to pick a fight with her. It would aggravate me more. God bless you. God bless you. You know? You ain't got time for that, man. Because you're creating momentum. Yeah. Every day you position yourself. Every day you co-labor with the Holy Spirit in the secret place to let him slay you and reveal your heart to you, yeah. man. Every time you deny yourself and don't curse Billy out. Mm -hmm. Every time you say, no, I'm not going to look at that today, man. Every time you say, nope. I'm going to go lower, lower. I'm going to be a limbo king. How low, how low can you go? How low? I'm, I'm telling you, man. Every time you do that, the momentum increases. Yeah. Where eventually you're going to break through for you. And you're going to be the answer where you break out for others. Yeah. Man. That's why you're here, man. Yes. That's why you're here. That's why you're still breathing today. Most of the world don't know it. Most of the world is so self-centered, it's all about them. Most of the church Come on. is so self-centered, it's still about them. Oh, I can't receive what Brother Steve's saying, you know. I don't want to get a job, even though it's a commandment in the Bible. Oh, I don't want to position myself and get stirred and stir my brothers and sisters, even though it's a commandment in the Bible. Come on. Ooh. Oh, I don't want to show my mother. Nobody talks to me like that. It's hard submitting to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because 
We've been living in a way that seems right to us for a long time, man. Proverbs 14, 12. And we justify the decisions we make. Just like I did. God's not moving. Let's go watch the Bears. Go watch the Cowboys. Cowboys pretty good this year. Pretty good this year. It's all good, man. So from now on, because I know the stiff stuff, I don't regard anyone according to the flesh. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Okay. So if you're in Christ, you're new. You don't have to do anything you used to do. It's because you want to do it. Okay. 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 Either if you're in Christ or you're not. If you're in Christ, you're new. If you're not in Christ, you know, lots of times I ask the Lord, you know, you know, Sundays, we're pretty packed, you know. I mean, we even though we're just starting, right? You know, and I'll be like, Lord, why do all these people come? Are half of them don't even, are they saved? And I start asking God names, man. Are they even saved? You know? He goes, everybody's got a different process. Everyone's got a different process. Everyone's got a different process. But all things have become new. 90% of things? No, all. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus. And he has given you the ministry of reconciliation. Wow. You got a ministry? We just talked about it. Reconciliation. Making peace. You servers got to say you're sorry. You willful sinners got to say you're sorry. No, you got to. I, I'm just, I'm being silly, but I'm just saying. We got to because you have the ministry of reconciliation. You're the example. Don't do it for the idiots who hurt you. Or, or not even hurt you because they shouldn't have hurt you. But that got out of pocket with you. Do it for yourself so your momentum keeps going. Blessed are the peacemakers. Matthew 5. Do you want the kingdom to come? Then make peace. You have the ministry of reconciliation. You're called for it. So next time your husband or wife acts stupid, go lower. Next time your co-worker acts stupid, go a little lower. Next time family members, you know, employees, co-workers, you know, Let's go lower, man. It's to the glory of a man to overlook a transgression. Some Proverbs. But you have to communicate things. I'm going to overlook this. I'm going to do this, but we're going to talk about this, man, you know, so it don't keep happening because you ain't no doormat either, right? You're not no doormat either, man. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God himself was pleading through you. Wow. You know, ambassadors have diplomatic immunity. The ambassadors from Germany can come to America and drive as fast as they want and they can't get a speeding ticket. Did you know that? They got diplomatic immunity. You're of heaven now. You're a citizen of heaven now. You're a new creation. You have diplomatic immunity from sin. You have diplomatic immunity from staying angry. You have diplomatic immunity from addiction. You have diplomatic immunity from manipulation and control. You have diplomatic immunity from self-centeredness and laziness, man. You're an ambassador. God believes in you. 
to bring heaven into the earth. You're a representative of heaven. And he's pleading through you, reveal me, reveal me, reveal me. Do you feel the glory on that when I just said that? Reveal me, reveal me, son. Reveal me, my precious daughter. Reveal me, stretch yourself, make yourself uncomfortable. Suffer, suffer, build momentum, or you won't be sorry in the long run. Oh, I am a God of process, but I got to slay you and clean you up so you can carry this purity and this holiness and this power and this anointing. Just let me. I'll position you around in some nuts, man, that are anointed and you can receive from them. He's faithful, man. He's faithful. He's faithful. Verse 21. For he made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God, man. You're the righteousness of God. I don't feel righteous, man. I'm still thinking crazy. I'm still... Don't, it doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what you think. Remember, as you believe in your heart, man, as you believe, you are how you're believing. You're not how you what you're going through. You're not how you're feeling or how you're thinking. You're how you're believing. You just haven't developed and conditioned that kingdom habit yet, man. I'm telling you. You just haven't. You got to believe in your heart. You must believe. Ephesians 2.8. You are saved by grace through faith. You receive the grace, the power, the authority to become brand new by believing it. Did you have to do anything to get it? No. No. You didn't. See, the grace is... A free gift. It's a supernatural empowerment to do for you, in you, and then through you for others that you can't do in your own strength. That's how come he slays us. Because he gives grace and more grace, more power, more substance. It's the currency of heaven. And he wants to give it to you now. Because Hebrews 11 once says, now faith is, man. Now believing is. Now the opportunity to see yourself as he sees you and others as he sees them is here for you, man. Now for you to let me slay you. It's here. It's here. The Holy Ghost backhands have saved my life so many times, man. It saved my marriage. Saved my finances. Saved, man. That grace empowers you to say no. Whoa. Whoa. It's a supernatural empowerment. That grace empowers you to pray for those who can't stand you. That you can't stand. Even though you shouldn't be there. But Grace empowers you. To love like Jesus loved. To pick up where he left off. John 14, 12. If you believe, you'll do the same works I did in greater. Grace, man. But you got to believe you're new. If you don't believe you're new, yeah, I felt good. and But man, I don't know now. Because the enemy starts bombarded. That's why you got to get around brothers and sisters to encourage each other, to build each other up. You know? Yeah. Not to judge each other. Because we all got a different process, man. Yeah. We all got a different process. Praise God you didn't have to go through brother so-and-so's process, man. Yeah. No, honestly. Because yeah. you probably wouldn't have made it. Yeah. But brother so and so still in the fight, man. He's still in a fight. You would have got knocked out. That's right. 
but we want to judge brother so and so, you know, instead of love them. Love them through the process, man. Love them through the process, man. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without believing him, it is impossible to believe him. You got to believe him without faith. It's impossible to please God, man. Hebrews 3, 10 through 12. Let me show you something. Hebrews 3, 10 through 12. This is God speaking. Therefore, I was angry with that generation, talking about the people in a generation in the wilderness. The ones that were supposed to go to the promised land, but he made them walk around the same mountain and then whacked them all, man. Right? Millions dead. He said, therefore, I was angry with that generation. And I said, they always go astray in their hearts. So where do we go astray? In our hearts, man. That's how come people might doubt what you say, but they'll never doubt what you do, man. Luke 6, 45. Because out of the condition of your heart, your mouth will speak, man. If you're getting mad and stone temper tantrums at home, if you're getting mad and talking about your boss, if you're getting mad and talking about your husband and wife, or your bad little baby's kids, you know, I mean, there's something up with your heart, man. And if you'll go to the secret place, the Lord will tell you. The Lord will show you. Because he wants that landing strip destroyed. He wants... You to deal with that issue. Why you do what you do, man. Why you do what you do. Because you're not created for that. It doesn't produce love life in the kingdom, right? They always go astray in their hearts. And they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, man. See, when you're... Living through the Holy Spirit with your feelings, thoughts, and emotions and fleshly desires yielded to him. You live at peace and joy and rest, man. Yeah. I was a Christian many years, even getting people healed and saved. But I didn't have that rest. Yeah. I got it today. I got that rest, man. Every day before I get out of bed, it's going to be a good day. Because I don't have to use my AK. No, no. I mean, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good day, man. I like ice cubes. Good day. I, but it's gonna be a good day. Why? Because my day's already settled. I'm gonna wake up and love people for a living and destroy darkness as I encounter it. I'm gonna go around doing good, just like Jesus, man. Me and Letty went. Let's just. I want a gordita. Like, oh, man. We went to this little hole-in-the-wall restaurant. Man, it was packed. It was good. But, of course, you know, we start talking to people. And the Holy Spirit says, okay, you're going to buy their meal. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> he said, pay their tip, too. Because you have a little something about what I just told you to do in your heart. So an $11 thing turned into a $41 thing, man, you know? But what an honor, right? Yeah, yeah. I learned something from it yesterday, man. I learned something from it, man. Yeah, I learned something from it. Don't order a single enchilada. No, no. <laughs> Let these like the enchilada. But understand, man, we got to rest, man. We got to rest. Verse, verse 12. Beware, brethren, lest there be any in you an evil heart of unbelief. He calls unbelief an evil heart condition. When I tell you to do something, 
You guys argue with me sometimes. That's an evil heart, man. I'm either God's man or for you or not, man. You know? But we play games, don't we? God tells you to do stuff in, the, in your secret place. Come on. Or we do stuff like this. How about this one? Here I am, Lord. Use me. <laughs> and then he starts telling you, oh, no, no, no. I ain't going to talk to my neighbor. I ain't talked to that chick in three years, man. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I ain't called my mother-in-law. No, I ain't getting a J-O-B, a full-time job. I went this long without one and hustling and manipulating everyone. I'm going to go a little bit longer. Let me, Lord, you know my reasoning. <laughs> We're a tricky, how would we say that? We're a tricky, tricky, tricky people sometimes, man. No, Lord, I ain't forgiven him. No, that's under the blood. I ain't trying to fix those relationships that I screwed up. Whoa. <clears throat> Whoa. That's under the blood. I'm new today. Wow. Sometimes he wants you to. Sometimes he don't. Because it might cause more, more harm. Because they're not ready for your repentance. But sometimes he wants you to fix them. Not for them, but for you. To destroy landing strips. It's a depth of forgiveness, a whole of preaching. We ain't talking about that tonight, man. <clears throat> but understand who you are, man. It's the difference. When you're immature, it's Proverbs 3, 5. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, and he shall direct your path. But I tell you, there's a place of maturity where you're so one with him. And it's Psalms 37, 23. He said, the steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. And the Lord delights in their ways, man. Sometimes I ask God, God, what do I do? What do I do? He goes, pick one. I'll bless it. I delight in your ways. So he tells me. I'm like, wow. Wow. But I'll tell you. For many years, that wasn't the case. God, I need to hear your voice now. I'm going to cross road. <laughs> we got to acknowledge him. But there's a place where, hey, you know him. He knows you. You live through him. You live for him. You're denying yourself. You might not be perfect yet, but you're on your way. Yeah. Just pick one, man. Pick one. And he'll bless it, man. He'll bless that path. See, <clears throat> living by faith means you're going to have to step out in stuff that you don't know. It's the unknown, man. It's the unknown. When I went, when the Lord told me to move to L.A., I did not have a place to live. I had a wife with me and three dogs. <laughs> we were sneaking dogs in hotel rooms. And my dogs don't act right, you know. <laughs> Cruising around, hustling a dollar here and there. Everything's expensive in LA. Until finally kept doing the right thing, doing the right thing, and then just broke through and blew up. It only took about three months. It didn't take too long. You know? But I, I could have said, man, Lord, I got no place to sleep. I can't, you know. I've never been there. And it's one thing when you do it with you, but dragging your wife through it. You know? Dragging somebody else through it with you. You know? Me, I could sleep anywhere, man. Not really, but I can if I have to. You know? Not that I want to, <laughs> but I have. You're so valuable and important, guys. You're so remarkable, man. You got to see yourself like he does, man. Don't let this evil heart of unbelief sneak up on you, man. Proverbs 28.1 says that those that are in fear 
are wicked. The wicked live in fear. It says that they're afraid when nobody's even chasing them. Oh, I can't go there. He just got done telling you. He calls not believing him evil. It says this, the second part of that verse, but the righteous, those who know who they are, are bold as lions, man. The righteous go around flexing everywhere, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The righteous go around flexing. Because they believe that the unseen is more real than anything they see, man. Because they've been with him. When you've been with him, you don't trip when things don't go your way. I promise you, you don't, yeah, man. Yeah. You don't trip. Well, I don't know. He might not fit, do it the way I think he's going to do. Something's going to come, man. You know, they were singing in a worship today. You know, you move the mountains again and again and again, man. Yeah. Not one time, but he's faithful, man. Yeah. He's faithful. Yeah. God favors the bold, by the way. If you step out in faith, you could be an idiot. You could be an idiot. But he favors you. Yeah. Yeah. He does. He don't favor those who play it safe. That's right. He does it, man. Psalms 84 tell you. Yeah. He says, Psalms 84, verse 5 through 7 says, even though you go through the valley of Baca, you know, in the Hebrew, that means the valley of tears. He says, he'll make it rain because you're going through it. And then as you keep walking it, he'll turn it in to a river, man. But you got to step out. It says, blessed is the man, the woman who has set their heart on adventure. If your walk with God is not adventurous, man, your heart's not where it needs to be. We need to keep showing up. You need to keep coming. You need to keep doing the stuff that's being taught and preached, man. You got to. You need to keep receiving that impartation in the atmosphere, man. You know, I said this Saturday in a leaders meeting. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't. But I know the one who does. He says, do this. Do that. Sometimes he says, just do it. I'll bless it, man. Come on, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. You know, it, there's even a study and statistics done that when people retire, they die faster. Because they're not moving. Because they're not moving. You got to do something. If you're going to retire, don't sit around the house to watch every Netflix series for the next six years. Do something, man. Do something. We don't care if you could quote everything they said from Stranger Things, man. You know what I mean? Quote the Bible. Do something, man. Do something, man. Romans 6, verses 18 through 22. We're closing here. And having been set free from sin, you're brand new. So does sin have a hold on you anymore? Unless you want it to. Unless you let it. Having become, having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness, man. Paul says, I speak in human terms because of the weakness of our flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves for uncleanliness, sleeping around, beating people up, doing 12-ounce curls. You know how we used to get down, man. Our members were slaves of righteousness. I mean, of unrighteousness. Of uncleanliness. And it would lead to more sin that led to more sin. <clears throat> but now present yourself slaves to righteousness for holiness, man. For holiness, man. When you purpose in your heart you won't have to try to live holy and not look at porn no more. Come on. You automatically won't look at porn. You'll have no desire to look at it no more. You won't have to try to quit drinking. You just have no desire for Budweiser anymore, yeah. man. 
You won't have to try to not curse people out, but you automatically see their creative value and you'll feel bad for them. And instead of getting hurt by people, you'll hurt for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Verse 22, but now having been set free from sin, he has to say it again just in case you missed it the first time, okay? You're a new creation. You're free from sin. <coughs> if you believe Jesus is Lord, you are free from sin. You got to just believe it yeah. so the grace can flow. You have become a slave for God, and you have your fruit to holiness. There it is again. It's automatic. You live holy automatically. You live holy automatically, man. You got to understand that he doesn't want you trying. You do it in your own strength. He wants grace flowing through you so it's automatic. He wants you dependent upon him while you're interdependent upon your brothers and sisters, man, in the house he assigned you to, man. Yeah. That's what he wants, man. That's what he wants, man. You know, he wants you to become more and more like him as you keep seeking him, man. So you can love like he loved, think like he thinks, speak yeah. like he speak, yeah. man. To do what he done, man, while on the earth, man, you know. You are called to bring glory everywhere you go. You are called to bring heaven everywhere you go, man. You are called. To become just like Jesus, man, where angels visit you. Where Jesus himself comes off the throne and say, what's up, Cynthia? Where the angel feathers, the gold dust, where you're getting taken out of your body and cruising into the revelatory realms of the spirit, man. Where you're hearing in the spirit. And, man, you got something to matter with your neck, man. You're battling with this, man. The other day, Alex called me and said, man, brother, that was the word of God you gave me the other day. Thank you for being who you are. You know, and I heard something and I told Alex what I heard. It's that simple. It's that simple. But we have to position ourselves in that place, man. We got to position ourselves in that place. You are just like him. You are righteous. You are righteous. You are righteous. You are righteous. I don't care what the battle is. You are righteous. You can fix it tonight, man. You can fix it tonight. Amen. I want to thank everybody online for checking us out. Ooh, I'm telling you, Holy Ghost is doing it. I'm telling you, man, he's calling you into the party. And there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. I'm telling you, come on in, man. We love you guys here. You be blessed, man. Good night.